This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. The world of Greek mythology is filled to the brim with terrifying monsters that would eat your face off given the opportunity. There's the lion-goat-snake hybrid known as the Chimera, hideous winged demon ladies called Furies, but the one that I think is the dumbest looking is not me, it's the Cyclops. Just look at it. It's literally just a giant ugly man with one eye. Don't get me wrong, I would not want to run into one on my way home from the bathhouse, but when you consider how wild some of the other creatures in mythology look, the Cyclops is pretty lame and pretty tame. You know the old saying though, don't judge a book by its cover, and there is a lot more to the Cyclops than meets the eye. As a species, or race, or phylum, wherever they fit on the taxonomic rank, they've been mischaracterized as being big dumb oafs, mostly because their most mainstream member is Polyphemus, the big dumb oaf who Odysseus blinded in Homer's Odyssey. If anything, Polyphemus is a little overrepresented. There are other Cyclops in Greek mythology who played a much more influential role over the course of cosmos history, but they aren't referenced in pop culture nearly as often. Some Cyclopes are even master craftsmen, responsible for forging the most powerful weapons and armor in all of mythology, and in this episode you're going to learn everything there is to know about them, including their brutal demise. My name is John Solo, and this is the messed up mythology of the Cyclopean blacksmiths. Doesn't exactly roll off the tongue, does it? Now you might be surprised to hear this, but the first ever Cyclops, or I guess I should say Cyclopes because there's more than one, are older than Zeus or any of the Olympians. In fact, they would be considered the Olympians' uncles. That's because the Cyclopes, a term that means orb-eyed, are the children of Uranus and Gaia, the oldest of the primordial deities and living embodiments of the sky and earth respectively and when they were born, they did not receive a warm welcome. See, Uranus and Gaia had already popped out a few kids at this point, and Uranus hated all of them, so much so that he would force them back into Gaia's womb instead of letting them walk free, and this caused her incredible pain both physically and emotionally. After enduring the suffering for a length of time that we humans can't even comprehend, Gaia fashioned a jagged sickle out of gray flint and offered the weapon to her children, encouraging them to dethrone their father with it and take over as rulers of the universe. The only one who was brave enough to do it though was Cronus, and while his father was sleeping soundly, he used the sickle to chop off his balls and then toss them into the ocean below. But this didn't change things much for his brothers, the Cyclopes named Brontes, meaning thunder, Steropes, meaning lightning, and Argos, meaning bright. While titans like Oceanus, Rhea, and Themis were set free, the more monstrous of the bunch went out of the frying pan and into the fire. Literally, they were thrown into the fiery pits of Tartarus, an underworld prison where the most dangerous men and monsters are punished for their wicked ways. And it was here they stayed until being freed by their nephew, Cronus' son, Zeus, who needed all the help he could get if he was going to win his war against the Titans. To thank him for freeing them, the Cyclopes used their blacksmithing skills to create the world's first sacred altar, which the Olympians all swore allegiance on before the war began. Then the Cyclopes crafted the iconic weapons and armor of Zeus and his brothers, the lightning bolt, the trident, and the helm of invisibility, which were pivotal in the Olympians' eventual victory. After the war was over and Zeus was sitting comfortably on his new throne, Brontes, Steropes, and Argos were now free to dedicate themselves entirely to their talents. They became the assistants of the blacksmithing god Hephaestus and went to work in his forge under the volcano that we know today as Mount Etna. There they would go on to craft more gifts for the gods including Ares' chariot, Athena's armor, and the bows of Apollo and Artemis. They even lent a helping hand to the god of wine, Dionysus, when he went to war against India, the Cyclopes fought in the battlefield alongside his followers and crafted all of their weapons. Weapons that were so well made that the Indian king even ordered his own soldiers to not kill the Cyclopes if they come across them, but instead blind them so they could be captured and then forced to make weapons for the Indians. Quite the testament to their craftsmanship that the king would rather risk the lives of his men to capture them instead of just taking them out of the fight first chance he got. Though I do wonder if he considered that their quality would probably take a dip for a while after they lost the ability to see. 
There are also three walls that have been credited to the Cyclopean blacksmiths, a wall in Argos, a wall in Tiryns, and a wall in Mycenae, though there is some debate about whether they were specifically made by Argos, Brontes, and Steropes. Some sources credit the walls to the seven Cyclopean wall builders, but don't give any names. Though if we consider that some believe the three Cyclopes had four sons, all of whom were also master craftsmen, it would be reasonable to assume that it was these seven who built the walls maybe during a father-son picnic. As adorable as that is though, I'm sad to say these fathers and sons would soon be separated by an almighty murderer. Before we dive into that messed up myth though, I wanna say thank you to our sponsor, Squarespace. I said it last month and I'll say it again. If you're trying to launch a new business or passion project and wanna shout it from the mountaintops, Squarespace can be your mountaintop. I know, it's a great metaphor. Why wouldn't I use it more than once? Because no matter what you're into, cooking, doing yoga, making music, or hosting a podcast, Squarespace makes it easy to build a website and market yourself to the world. Here's how it works. You go to squarespace.com slash John Solo and sign up for your free trial. You take a short quiz detailing what kind of site you're looking to launch and some of your goals. And by the end, you have dozens of possible templates at your fingertips, all curated for your specific needs. The best part is these templates are all customizable, so you can make the most of Squarespace's features, like photo galleries, VIP members only areas, video embedding, and a surplus of tools for bloggers. Actually, that's wrong. The real best part is you don't need to download or install anything onto your computer to do all this. Your entire website can be designed inside your web browser, the very same one you online shop and watch my videos in. Pretty amazing, right? It's almost like you have nothing to lose by giving Squarespace a shot. And remember, all you have to do is go to squarespace.com slash John Solo to try them out completely free. And when your site is ready for launch, use code John Solo to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And we're back. Now I want you to brace yourself because the death of the Cyclopes is a surprisingly tragic one. The story goes that once upon a time, there was a great healer named Asclepius who was famous throughout his country for his pharmaceutical knowledge and ability to cure any illness. The only illness he didn't know how to treat was death. That is, until goddess of wisdom, Athena, gave him a vial of Medusa's blood that could be used to bring the dead back to life. Now, to his credit, Asclepius knew that was a lot of power for a mortal like him, so he used it sparingly. But resurrecting even one person meant he was interfering in Hades' business, and that was not something the Chthonic king would stand for. Hades brought the issue up to his brother Zeus and told him about this mortal who could stop Thanatos dead in his tracks, and Zeus agreed that the natural order had to be restored. So with Without hesitation, he struck Asclepius down with a lightning bolt and sent his soul to the underworld. What Zeus forgot in that moment was that Asclepius was the son of Apollo, who would have absolutely murdered Zeus if it weren't for his, you know, unlimited power and magnificent beard. Unable to punish the true killer of his kin, he took out his rage on the forgers of Zeus's lightning bolt, the weapon that he used to slay him. He marched up to the entrance of Hephaestus' workshop, shining brightly so his would-be victims couldn't see what's coming, and loosed his arrows into each of the Cyclopes' eyes, killing them instantly where they stood. Zeus would go on to reprimand his son Apollo for his mindless actions by stripping him of his powers and forcing him to be the servant of King Admetus for an entire year but I can't exactly say this was a hardship. Apollo spent that time relaxing, watching over the king's herds, and actually getting along with Admetus pretty well. In fact, they became such good friends that when Apollo learned that the fates were going to cut the thread of Admetus' life, he got them drunk and convinced them not to. Meanwhile, the best blacksmiths in the universe were still dead, and Hephaestus had lost not only his assistants, but his good friends. The only question that remains for us is which Cyclopes specifically did Apollo kill? And the answer depends on which of the poets you ask. Some say it was the three OGs, Argos, Brontes, and Steropes, but other sources maintained that the other Cyclopes were immortal, and so it must have been their sons. Either way, it was a pretty messed up thing for him to do. But that solo fam was the messed up mythology of the Cyclopean blacksmiths. Now I wanna know, did I change your perception of Cyclopes away from the big fat goof bag that we're used to seeing in pop culture? Hashtag thanks Polyphemus. Also, if you could have Argos, Brontes, and Steropes make you weapons, armor, or some other contraption, 
what would it be? Let Gunther and I know in a comment down below. Then make sure to sacrifice those like and subscribe buttons to the algorithm gods to support the show and get more messed up content sent to your sub box every week. And for those who missed the news, we have official messed up origin social channels now that you can follow for updates about the show, bonus messed up trivia, epic fan art, and more. Just search messed up origins on Twitter or Instagram to find them and keep an eye out for the giveaway that we're doing this month. That's right, I'm bribing you to follow us. It's a legitimate strategy. I'll see you all again next week when we dive back into the world of Norse mythology. Until then, my name is John Solo, and remember, John shot first. Thank you.